Okay, guys, so now let's move to question 10.1.2. And this question is allocated to Max. So the question reads as follows. Calculate the effective resistance of the parallel combination. So guys, for the fact that this question is allocated to Max, it means it's not... A complicated question so you shouldn't be worrying um, when you get a question in physics and you find that the question is allocated two marks just know for two marks three marks it should be a straightforward question where you can easily score uh, all of those marks so now in this case we are required to calculate the effective resistance of the parallel combination so obviously our focus is on these two resistors because they are connected in parallel. So first thing first, you write down the formula for parallel connection. We know it's one over R parallel that's equals to one over R of six ohms plus one over R of 15 ohms. I'm sure this is where you score your first mark, but then we'll see when we get to that stage where uh, we mark the question. So, okay, in, in, in answering the question, guys, remember there's a general formula for parallel connection where you've got, a, okay, I'll just write it somewhere here, where it says one over R parallel is equals to one over R1 plus 1 over R2, plus 1 over R3, and so on. So this is the general formula for resistors connected in parallel. So what it means, it's, it's that depending on how many resistors you've got, then that's where you limit uh, the formula. So in this case, we are only given r1 and r2 that's why we end our equation there where it's 1 over r of 6 ohms plus 1 over r of 15 ohms if we had an additional connection there so that's when we're going to have 1 over r1 plus 1 over r2 plus 1 over r3 which means we'll be having three resistors connected but in this case, we've got two resistors connected. That's why it's one, two. But if we had more, we're going to add some more, depending on how many resistors are connected. So I hope that makes sense. So let's now continue with our question. So we've got one over R in parallel, which is equals to we substitute 1 over 6 plus 1 over 15. So that means a R of 6 ohms, that's where we substitute our 6. R of 15 ohms, that's where we substitute our um, 15. So what we do is just to punch all of this on a calculator. Remember, guys. The answer of this is 1 over R parallel. So you start by a division sign, then 1 over 6 plus 1 over 15. It's equals to 7 over 30. So that means 1 over R parallel is equals to 7 over 30. So remember guys, what we're calculating here is the R parallel. So there are so many ways in which you can um, solve the R parallel when you get to this stage. So you might find that your teacher said uh, you just do the reciprocal. So in short, it's like a, you cross multiply. When you cross multiply, you have 
a 30 multiplying 1 you have r parallel multiplying 7 then you divide by 7 so that it cancels from the 7 r you remain with this r and then you've got um your 30 divided by 7 or you may be taught that when you get to this stage you just move the r parallel to the top move one to the bottom you do the same on the right side of the equal sign you move 30 to the to the top and then you move seven to the bottom or otherwise when you get to this stage you can simply introduce an exponent negative one so what it does it automatically moves 30 to the top 7 to the bottom so what i mean by that is let's just quickly check what answer we get we've got over remember it's we are at this stage so it's 7 over 30 to the power minus 1 so we've got that to the exponent uh, minus 1 it's equals 2 can you see so it automatically moves 30 to the top and 7 to the bottom so which is the same as this part which is your final answer but remember we need the final answer in a form of decimal so let's see um, so on this calculator this is what you use guys I'm not sure if you were aware you use this button to convert a number which is in fraction form to um, a decimal so let's see when you press this you get 4.2857 blah 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 so now let's let's just try round it to uh, two decimal places which means it's two nine ohms so this is your final answer as a um, effective resistance of parallel combination it's 4.29 ohms so that's how you answer your question 10.1.2 Okay, and again, guys, um, before I forget something which is the most important thing when it comes to uh, parallel connections. So can you see the effective resistance of this combination? It's less than the smallest resistance of the resistor excuse me so what it means is that when you have a parallel connection and you're calculating the effective resistance of the parallel combination or parallel connection your answer should always be less than the smallest value of the resistor i'm not sure if it makes sense guys I'll just quickly give you an example to say, assuming that we had a, a parallel connection, let's say this was 0 0.5 ohms and this was, say, 0 0.2 ohms, and you were to calculate the effective resistance of this parallel combination. So what I meant by that statement is that your R effective should be less than the smallest resistor so this is the smallest resistor 0 0.2 so that means your answer should be less than 0 0.2 ohms if you calculate the resistance of these two uh, parallel combinations and you find that your answer is greater than the smallest resistor then what I'm saying is try to recalculate because that's the wrong answer. Okay, okay, let's quickly do.
do it so because we won't waste much time on this we'll just do the shortcut of calculating okay so because we won't have to waste much time on this we'll apply the shortcut of calculating the parallel connection so remember it's all of these then i square to minus one so that it changes the position of the values can you see so we've got an answer as 0 0.143 ohms can you see can you see what i meant so the resistance of this combination is smaller than the smallest resistor so i think this is some of the information that you can just make sure that you note down and never forget because if you are not aware of this kind of information then even if you're making an obvious mistake <clears throat> excuse me so even if you're making an obvious mistake you won't be able to easily notice that you're making a mistake but knowing this kind of information helps you to be able to confidently move to the next question because you'll be knowing that your effective resistance of the parallel combination is less than the smallest um, resistance of the resistor. So in that way, it gives you hope that your calculation might be correct, provided that you followed um, the correct procedure to calculate the resistance. So you, you should not use the shortcut when doing this. You can do that part if you are confident and only when you are at the final answer where you just need to punch the calculator because um, you want to score maximum max. So now let's get to the marking part. So obviously because you wrote down the correct formula for calculating a the resistance the effective resistance then we give you a mark and again we can give you a mark for correct substitution but actually um we're not supposed to give you a mark for correct substitution because remember this question is only allocated two marks so that means we can only give you um let's see we can only give you a mark for correct substitution and a mark for final answer so because i think you won't be given a mark there the reason is because on the formula sheet you're given this formula so you'll only be given a mark for correct substitution and correct final answer that's where you score your two marks but if it was allocated three marks that's where you're going to score a mark for writing the correct formula and remember guys i'll always uh, mention this that when when we talk about the correct final answer in physical sciences we refer to a correct magnitude with a correct si unit so if you only had 4.29 you are not going to score a mark because um, in physics you write the magnitude and uh, the correct SI unit for scalar quantities but if it was a vector quantity then you know you're going to give the direction but this is a scalar quantity meaning we only provide the magnitude no direction needed so that's basically how you answer question 10.1.2 uh, I had to make this video a bit longer because there was some additional information that I had to provide uh, so that in future when you answer related questions you can be able to then use all of this information to uh, correctly answer whatever question that you'll be treating so thanks for watching I think we can now move to the next question